Welkom allemaal. Als iedereen zijn plaats gevonden heeft, kunnen we beginnen. Uh, ik ga meteen uh, over in het Engels, uh, because we have some very special foreign guests. So unfortunately, for those who would prefer Dutch, the whole evening will be in English. Uh, another important announcement that I'd like to make is that this whole evening is being recorded. Um, if you have a problem with that, now is the time to leave. Um, yeah, welcome to this wonderful evening here at the Bali. Thank you all so much for coming. Uh, my name is Pia Poel and tonight I will introduce um, this night on the fearless city of Amsterdam. Um, this evening was started by Frans Biekman, who I will give the floor to uh, first. He will introduce uh, the concept of the fearless city. After that, uh, our special foreign guests, who I will introduce later, will talk a little bit more about their respective fearless cities. And uh, after that, a uh, short debate, short talk uh, with the members of the left wing pact here in Amsterdam. Um, questions? already, please hold them until the end. Frans? Thank you. Um, we're finally starting. It was a lot of uh, work the past um, week, especially. Um, but I'm very happy that we are together here tonight with especially Mark and Luigi, who will talk later. Three, three weeks ago, we sat here at, at the Bali, um, very late at night, after the Rebel City Conference in Paradiso. We sat together with uh, Marjolein, Laurens and Rutger and Xavi Ferrer from uh, Barcelona to prepare for this event. And there was very little time left to arrange the, for rep representatives from, from Barcelona and Naples to come here. But you made it. So uh, very welcome to Amsterdam. Um, I'm also happy that we can now make a start with moving Amsterdam towards an active role in what is called the international municipal municipalist, it's a very different, difficult word, municipalist movement, um, for Amsterdam to beco become a yeah, do we? <laughs> Yo. Um, to become a fearless city or a rebel city. <laughs> it's, that the rebel goes, goes away, yeah. Um, or whatever we call it. The name is not so important. Is it, it is important what we do. Um, I think we can learn a lot of what other cities around Europe and beyond have been doing already. We chose for the name Fearless City for many reasons. It describes what every city should aspire to. Create an inclusive city in which everyone can live without fear and insecurity. Not only security in a physical sense, but also with access to health care, to affordable housing, to a green and accessible neighborhood, to clean air, and important with security about income, about a job that is not becoming ever more flexible. These are all issues that for a long time left-wing parties have been struggling for. But we need more with nationalist right-wing movements growing and neoliberal right-wing parties and the free market still reigning. I think that the idea of municipalism goes beyond that. It could give a powerful swing to a renewal of politics beyond what we traditionally consider as left-wing politics. In times that national states are all in the hands of right-wing governments, progressive cities can and should make a difference. I was very much inspired by what's going on in Spain. I, you didn't introduce, uh, tell it, but I, I wrote a book about uh, Podemos and uh, new left politics in, in, in Spain. Um, municipalism is certainly not only happening in Spain, but in my book I focused on, on Spain, on, on Madrid, on, on Barcelona. Um, and I, f I started with researching Podemos, but I found out that there's much more going on there. There are strong movements in Spain. We saw it last Thursday with a very impressive uh, women's strike and millions of women going out on the streets. Mark, you, can, you told me about it uh, yesterday. Um, and there are all kinds of parties and collectives. Um, and there are the municipal confluencias. That's how they call it. It's it's uh, samenstromen in het in het in Nederlands. Civic platforms, 
One of those civic platforms is Barcelona and Camus, of which Mark is part. He will tell you more about that later, but one essential element of the city movements in Spain is that they are not only addressing local issues, but also create, together with other cities, a strong opposition to the national conservative government. But mun municipalism is first and foremost focusing on as much participation of citizens as possible. Not only activists, but also just normal people in their neighborhoods, in their jobs, in their, in, in, in everywhere. It is about democracy, it's about real democracy. That's not so easy if you want to go beyond rhetorics and ideals, and it takes a lot of effort to make it happen. Municipalism is also about taking back the control over the market, taking back essential services and needs out of the hands of private companies. Not just to, to let them be managed by the city government, but also by the communities and the citizens for which these services are. The commons. For this, strong organization at the local level by citizens, by neighborhood groups, by sectoral groups is necessary. We cannot wait until the city governments arranges, arranges it for us, nor can we keep on pointing fingers at the pol politicians if they do not. But certainly a city government can stimulate all of this. How to do it, again, is not so easy. There are immense obstacles, even if you are very willing to go there. We will certainly hear examples from Luigi and Mark about the counterpowers that they face. Therefore, it is, it's, it's very important to learn from each other. We can learn a lot from Barcelona and Naples. And I hope that in some aspects, they can also learn from us in Amsterdam. Although the city has changed enormously in the past years and not for the better, we do have a tradition as a red city a, or as a rebel city. It's long ago, but it used to be that, like that. I went last year to the first Fearless Cities conference that was organized by Barcelona and Camus. Three days with 700 people from cities all over the world exchanging experiments, best practices and inspiring each other. That international network should be strengthened and I hope Amsterdam will contribute strongly to that. I think that collaboration between Amsterdam and Barcelona and Naples is very necessary, not only because of learning from each other, we need an internationalist movement at a European level. National governments are not able to change the European course of things. They are either right-wing or not able because of the European institutions controlling the most important policy areas. Cities should draw more in initiative to themselves. They are usually more progressive and they do have a lot of power. As a city from the rich European north, Amsterdam should not, not go with the national government's rhetoric against southern Europeans being lazy and only drinking and fucking around, as our former finance, finance minister framed it. We should not go with the ideology that puts the north of Europe against the south or the east of Europe. We should go for urban internationalism. Of course, there are a lot of differences between our cities, but we also have a lot in common. For example, the way in which our inner cities are being taken over by huge investment funds, buying real estate and whole housing blocks and speculate with them, pushing out the tenants, renovating the houses and sell them for high prices. This is taking place equally in Barcelona, Naples and Amsterdam, or New York or London. Only with combined forces, these huge powers with all their money and lawyers and lobbies can be put to hold. So to, today we can make a start with this collaboration. Although clear and radical statements are important, we should go beyond symbolic politics. We should start with some concrete issues to collab collaborate on. Make concrete commitments to policy issues which are priority for our specific cities. The talks of Luigi and Mark and the debate with Marjolein, Rutger and Lauren, Laurens should focus on, what, on that. How are we going to do it? Today is just the beginning. After the elections, which I hope will bring a left-wing city government, we should really start making it happen. Thank you. Then I would like to invite to the stage uh, Marc Serra representing Barcelona. Uh, 
and you are responsible, I've heard, for especially refugees and human rights, and um, you do that work within the municipality of Barcelona. And I would like uh, you to talk a little bit about the Fearless City of Barcelona and your ideas. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, my English is not so good, so today we have here a translator, Elena, that will, will explain in English better than me. Y hablaré en, en castellano, ¿vale? Porque sé que también hay público que entiende, que entiende el castellano. Uh, perfecto. Uh, bueno, yo, como, como han explicado, yo participo en Barcelona en Común, uh, que es una plataforma... Uh, nosotros intentamos evitar la palabra partido, hablamos más de plataforma ciudadana, candidatura ciudadana, que empezó un año, solo un año antes de, de ganar las elecciones, ¿no? Empezó en, en 2015, sí. Ok, so... Uh, apologize me, because I'm also sick. So, ok... Um, uh, to begin with, um, I want to explain about uh, what Barcelona and Como is. It's not a, a political party as such, but it's a, a gathering of several things. Entonces, uh, el Barcelona en Común empezó con algunas personas interesa interesadas en la política, pero que hacían política desde la calle, sobre todo, activistas sociales, miembros de movimientos sociales, contra los desahucios, la plataforma de afectados por la hipoteca, la conoceréis, uh, por el cierre de los CIES, la libertad de movimiento, del movimiento vecinal, de ONGs, que empezamos a hablar con partidos de izquierda, de izquierda tradicional, y también con partidos ecologistas para ver de, de qué manera podíamos unirnos ¿no? todos en una candidatura única. Ok, so, um, it began everything around, uh, about, about, around one year before um, the municipal elections in 2015, where some, some movement, some social movements and NGOs, such as the platform anti-evictions or... Um, associations uh, for the closing, for the closure of the integration uh, centers or movements, uh, community movements or so every kind of social movements which um, start talking with um, um, political parties from the left and ecologists and then all together uh, we created. Creamos esta plataforma ciudadana con objetivos comunes, combinando la potencia de la gente que venía de movimientos sociales con la experiencia en gestión ¿no? y la, la trayectoria también de los, de los políticos de la, de la izquierda. ¿no? Uh, y, y creamos una, una confluencia que no, es, que no es lo mismo que una coalición, porque en la candidatura no había cuotas. Nos juntamos antes de presentarnos y allí cada cual valía lo mismo, independientemente de que viniera de un gran partido de izquierdas, de un pequeño partido de izquierdas, de un movimiento social o de un movimiento vecinal. So um, all these uh, groups and uh, politicians combined and, uh, and it created uh, what nowadays is Barcelona en Comú, which is a, a new platform, um, a new citizen platform created with uh, common objectives, combining the, um, the strength and of the activists and the social movements and the, and the expertise of the politicians and this um, This uh, meeting, um, this meeting was, um, and the importance of this uh, meeting is that the importance of this uh, uh, of this gathering uh, is that we all are the same, that everyone was the same, that there there exists no sh no political shares, and everybody has the same the same importance to say so. Uh, lanzamos un manifiesto ¿no? con unos objetivos comunes y dijimos, si recibimos 30.000 apoyos, uh, nos presentamos a las elecciones y lo recibimos, lo recibimos en menos de tres meses y nos presentamos a las elecciones. So we, uh, we launch a manifesto and uh, we challenge ourselves by, by saying, like, if we get 30.000 signatures, In three months, we're going to present ourselves to the municipality. And we did that. We got those points, we got the signatures, and then we went ahead. 
A partir de allí empezó todo un proceso de construcción, uh, con debates en los barrios, con grupos en cada barrio, con debates también por, por ejes temáticos, debate sobre vivienda, debate sobre urbanismo, debate sobre turismo, ¿no? Y de allí salieron muchísimos grupos y permitimos también generar espacios para que se sintieran cómodas personas que tradicionalmente no habían participado de la política de partidos. Ok, so from that, uh, from that um, a lot of groups of debate and work emerge, um, covering up to 25 different areas and around um, throughout 20 neighborhoods. Um, and debating things like work or housing or immigration and, and always questioning themselves what would you, would you like the city to be and uh, from there many good many good ideas came out and many different projects came out una de las cosas que fue muy importante desde el inicio y que creo que es interesante compartir, aunque quizás Franz os lo, ha, os lo ha explicado algún día, es que todos los que estábamos allí nos comprometimos con un pacto, con un pacto de ética, un código ético. Y esto en España es muy importante, porque en España, como sabéis, hay muchísima corrupción por parte de la clase política y la ciudadanía tiene... Está muy enfadada con los políticos, ha perdido la confianza con los políticos. Entonces, nos juntamos todos y dijimos, ¿cuánto debería cobrar un político como máximo? ¿No? Y debatiendo, ¿no? se decidió que como máximo debía cobrar 2.200 euros, ¿no? que, que en España es, es dinero, pero tampoco es mucho, luego lo estamos sufriendo también. ¿no? Uh, dijimos, ¿cuánto tiempo puede estar un político en el poder? Y dijimos, ostras, el, quizás hay que poner un, un límite de mandato. Y acordamos que como mucho, ocho años, ¿no? Para que la política no fuera una profesión, sino que fuera una vocación de un ciudadano cualquiera. Uh, debatimos también sobre cómo podemos, cómo, cómo los ciudadanos pueden controlar a los políticos. Pues, por ejemplo, que los políticos tengan la obligación de colgar en Internet la agenda pública, donde se vea con quién se reúnen siempre. No? Y acordamos tener una agenda pública. Excuse me. So, so, sí. so there was it was created a, an ethical code, given the circumstances that the context in Spain was um, has always been very gloomy and uh, and we've had a lot of corruption, and we decided to make um, a pact between all of us, between the, all the parties, all the citizens and, and everybody. And we ask ourselves um, how much money would a politician, should a politician um, earn in such a, in a crisis situation as we have. So they agreed, they, they gathered and they spoke about it. And they, they suggested the amount of 2,200 euros. And uh, they also agree upon to having a public agenda where, um, where politicians were, were, yeah, where there w would not be um, private agendas and that could give a, a good, good star start for corruption. And also the limitation of a mandate to eight years, which um, implies that uh, politicians Um, do their job as a, as a real hobby because they love it, not just as a job. Y con, esta, con este pacto ético recuperamos la confianza de gran parte de la población de España, no solo de Barcelona, sino de todo el Estado, en la política, ¿no? aunque fuera una confianza temporal. Y, y se consiguieron ganar las elecciones en Barcelona, pero también en Madrid, con una fórmula muy parecida, en Coruña, en Cádiz, en Zaragoza, en Valencia, etc. So with this ethical, with, the, with this pact about the ethical code, we, we got a little bit the, the, whole, the, the trust of people. And, um, and then we, we won the elections in Barcelona but also in other cities such as Madrid, Valencia, Cádiz, La Coruña, Zaragoza, and many other cities that are cities for the change, cities without fear. Sí, y, y de aquí viene la idea de las, de las ciudades sin miedo, las fearless cities. Uh, nosotros creemos, Franz lo ha explicado muy bien, ¿no? Porque, porque hablamos de, de ciudades sin miedo, pero yo, yo, yo también quería aportar alguna idea. Uh, creemos que hay que luchar contra el miedo, hay que mirar a la cara al miedo, 
porque el miedo nos conduce al aislamiento, a la, a la resignación, a la sospecha. El miedo nos paraliza y hace que la gente se vuelva más conservadora, que se encierre, que desconfíe del vecino. Se rompen también lo más importante, que es la propia comunidad, los lazos de afecto, los vínculos, y que se expande el individualismo. Okay, so from that comes the idea of fearless city. So, because we need to fight against uh, this fear, this fear that uh, the that leads to isolation, to resignation, to suspect, to to suspicion, and um, the fear that paralyzes and makes people um, become more uh, conservative and uh, and trustful, distrustful. Sorry. And uh, it breaks the, the bonds, the affection, and uh, yeah. El miedo ha servido históricamente y ahora lo vemos en Estados Unidos ¿no? con, con Trump o, o aquí en Europa también ¿no? con la extrema derecha. Sirve para impedir los cambios sociales, ¿no? para, para de alguna forma recortar libertades, uh, que, que impide el avance en la, en la justicia social. Es lo que se, se llama la doctrina del shock, que la vemos presente ¿no? y que de alguna forma impide que la izquierda transformadora avance. Ok, so the fear that, uh, that has served historically um, as a strategy to, to stop and prevent social changes and to cut uh, um, on freedoms and, um, and social benefits. So, and it's about uh, the, the, the shocks doctrine from Naomi Klein. El miedo... so, el miedo a no pagar deudas, el miedo a hipotecarse, el miedo a no tener una pensión, el miedo a perder la casa, un desahucio, a perder los ahorros. La extrema derecha ha sabido ver esto, se alimenta de esto y busca que señalemos al, al, al vecino, ¿no? a, a los de abajo, al, al inmigrante, al transexual, al parado, al musulmán, ¿no? al diferente. So the fear to not being able to pay the debts or to be evicted or not to have a, a retirement pension or to lose your savings or, uh, yeah. The, so the extreme right really um, fits itself with this fear and making um, an identity withdrawal and searching for, uh, and makes people searching to the, search um, the enemy in the people from, uh, from beneath such as a uh, and makes and makes people point uh, who is underneath such as the neighbor or the immigrant or the um, or the transsexual or the muslim or the different in in España con el movimiento del 15M los indignados no y con la plataforma de afectados por la hipoteca encontramos una fórmula de luchar contra el miedo y era ¿no? Uh, y de impedir el avance de la extrema derecha. Y era señalando a los de arriba, señalando a los responsables ¿no? de, la, de la triple crisis que vivimos, la, la crisis democrática, la crisis económica, la crisis ecológica. Estas élites ¿no? son las que de alguna forma quieren que desde abajo nos estemos peleando ¿no? y por lo tanto hay que señalarlas. Y esto lo hemos aprendido bien y lo estamos llevando también a esta red ¿no? de municipios contra el miedo. So in Spain, um, we found this, uh through the 15M movement and um, the platform anti-eviction, we found a, a possible solution for, uh, for the fear and um, to, to, stop, uh, to stop the fear and, um, and refrain the, the appraisal of the stream right um, just by, by signaling the people who is uh, on the top, sorry, pointing to who is on the top and to the elites as responsible for the triple crisis that we are living in, which is the democratic crisis, the social crisis and the ecological crisis. Y es por eso que, que Barcelona ha tenido las manifestaciones más grandes para la acogida de refugiados, por ejemplo, o contra los desahucios, o que ha tenido manifestaciones por el cierre de los CIE, o como decía antes Franz, hubo una huelga uh, general ¿no? uh, feminista el, el 8 de marzo pasado, y en Barcelona si, salieron a la calle 600.000 personas ¿no? a, a gritar que no tienen miedo. ¿no? de alguna forma. Esta es la red que hoy queremos compartir con, con, todas, con todos y todas vosotras. So Barcelona has had uh, uh, the biggest demonstrations to, 
to the to the welcoming of refugees and and also for the closure of the um, immigration centers immigration detention centers and also we've had the biggest demonstration last week for the women's right and the uh, GLBTQ and uh, we had the biggest demonstration which where we gathered six six hundred thousand people and uh, and yeah entonces muy rápido vale uh, cuatro o cinco ideas de temas que, que hemos trabajado en Barcelona y que podemos compartir con vosotros ¿no? en esta red de ciudades sin miedo so right now so now just four ideas that we can that we can work together to to improve this en primer lugar, el, el problema que más preocupa en Barcelona y en Ámsterdam, creo, que es la vivienda, ¿no? el acceso a la vivienda. Uh, en Barcelona hemos creado, con la experiencia de la plataforma de afectados por la hipoteca, hemos creado una unidad para parar los desahucios, para, para de alguna forma intermediar. ¿no? Uh, hemos conseguido parar más de 2.000 desahucios desde que iniciamos el, el mandato. Y hemos creado también una oficina de intercambio de experiencias para luchar contra la, contra la gentrificación, contra la expulsión de los vecinos que viven en el centro, con Nueva York, con ciudades que, que de alguna forma están compartiendo los mismos problemas con nosotros. Y queremos también esta oficina, o abrirla también ¿no? con el nuevo gobierno de Ámsterdam que se cree, porque tenemos los mismos problemas en cuanto a expulsión de los vecinos, en cuanto a subida del alquiler ¿no? y en cuanto también a llegada de fondos buitre que de alguna forma intentan sacar beneficios con lo que es un derecho fundamental. Sorry. Ok, sorry. Uh -huh. um, so, the first one is uh, the housing. And I know that this is a big problem, as also it is in Amsterdam. So we have a, we have cre we have a, we have created a, an office online with a data to with data to share uh, an ana analysis and to share the analysis and experiences um, that several cities uh, share, such as New York or London or Barcelona, and then. Uh, Uh, also, the, P, the PH, the PH is the, the platform anti-eviction, is a um, is a platform to that has already that has already been very successful and and we got to stop 2,000 uh, evictions in the city, and and also about this office online that we were talking before, it's an office to to deal with the gentrification. Because in Barcelona we have the same problems as you do in Amsterdam. Refugio, no? Asilo, refugees. Uh, hemos visto en los últimos años ¿no? cómo los estados han fracasado en el intento de, en, en, de cumplir con los acuerdos de refugio. ¿no? La, mayor, la inmensa mayoría de los estados de la Unión Europea no han cumplido con, con los acuerdos de reubicación y de reasentamiento. Y ante el fracaso de los estados, las ciudades ¿no? nos hemos abierto y hemos dicho, hemos dicho nosotras sí que estamos comprometidas con los derechos humanos y nosotras queremos compartir recursos para efectivamente acoger a las personas refugiadas. Y en Barcelona, aunque los refugiados, el Estado español no ha colaborado para la llegada de refugiados, en Barcelona, con los que han llegado, hemos creado un plan municipal de acogida, ¿no? con viviendas para los refugiados, con atención social, para garantizar su plena integración en la ciudad con derechos. Ok, so... Ok, the refugee. So about the asylum, um, we've, um, we've seen how European laws and countries, uh, not just European, but have failed to defend on, to defend on the human rights, have, defended Im uh, have failed to defend immigrants and, and the human rights, the refugees. So. Sorry, can you repeat the idea? We, we, uh, hemos creado un, un programa municipal de acogida de, re, de, de refugiados para que los que pueden llegar a, a la ciudad ¿no? tengan una, una atención okay. digna, garantizando okay. sus derechos. So we've created with the immigrants that are coming into the city that have been able to arrive to the city. We've created a network to, to help them 
and to and so for them to be able to integrate sobre sobre inmigración uh, en España tenemos una ley que dice que los los sin papeles los los indocumentados no uh, no podrán el, el Estado no puede expulsarles si están arraigados en el país integrados en el país entonces lo que hemos hecho ha sido ofrecer a todos los vecinos y vecinas en situación irregular, sin papeles, de la ciudad, ofrecer unos informes en, lo, en los que decimos nosotros, ayuntamiento, acreditamos que es un vecino de la ciudad que está integrado, que está participando de estos cursos, que está buscando trabajo, a, que conoce estos idiomas, ¿no? que está formado, etcétera, para de alguna forma intentar tratar de evitar su expulsión y su internamiento en un centro de internamiento de extranjeros. Empezamos a hacer esto hace tres meses y ya hemos repartido más de 3.000 informes de estos para vecinos sin papeles. Esta es otra de las cosas que estamos dispuestos a compartir con toda la red de Fearless Cities. So regarding immigration, um, in Spain there is a, the law says that, um, that uh, settled citizens cannot be expelled. I mean, citizens are um, without documents, but that they are uh, somehow settled into the city. So we decided to create a kind of social report to, to avoid the eviction or, uh, or the deporting to, in, to integration centers. So, so far we've already, ha we've already got 3,000 reports in three months and uh, giving these people the chance to, to, to prove that they are part of the community, that they are looking for work or, or they, are, they speak several languages or they are, got, they are looking forward to, to have a life here. En cuanto a participación, y muy rápido, hemos cambiado las normas que regulan la participación en Barcelona para que los vecinos y vecinas puedan hacer consultas ciudadanas. Tienen que recoger 15.000 firmas ¿no? y entonces se hace una, una, una gran consulta al año. Y han sido los movimientos sociales de la ciudad los que han traído los primeros temas que se debatirán en consulta en este junio sobre la municipalización del agua, un plan contra la gentrificación y otro plan para restaurar o, o de alguna forma para cambiar el nombre de una plaza a un esclavista y dar este nombre a una víctima un migrante de violencia institucional. So regarding participation, uh, which is something very important, uh, we've, uh, we've, uh, we've changed the rules of participation, trying to include more people. So the citizens um, can actually make a, a citizen um, citizen inquiry, uh, consul citizen consultations and um, <clears throat> and uh, by gathering 15,000 signatures and uh, now we're going to do one of them and we have the um, we're going to ask about the handling of uh, of the water so giving the offering the possibility of a municipal handling or against uh, another one against we're going to talk we're going to ask about the gentrification and we're also going to talk about uh about the anti anti racist um uh, historical memory about a statue statue that it's a, a slavery um, para acabar ya, la, y creo que la experiencia de Barcelona junto a la de Nápoles que nos contarán y de otras ciudades del sur de Europa demuestra que en Europa, en la Europa del siglo XXI, sí se pueden hacer políticas transformadoras de izquierda, radicalmente democráticas, ecologistas y que sí se puede frenar el avance de la xenofobia ¿no? y de los partidos de la extrema derecha. So to, to summarize um, um, yeah, to close. Um, the experience of Barcelona and other cities, it, uh, it helps to demonstrate that, yes, that we can, we can have a government of, a, of left that is ecology, that cares about ecology issues and radically democratic in a Europe of, a, of the 21st century where, and try to stop and refrain the, the progress of the populism and the xenophobia um, and the ultra-right, actually.
tenemos una red de ciudades, una Fearless City Network que va creciendo, uh, que de, además está en contacto con las Sanctuary Cities de Estados Unidos, pero creemos que es muy importante trabajar bien Europa y tender puentes entre el norte de Europa y el sur de Europa, la Europa más rica y la Europa mediterránea. Para nosotros esto es muy importante y es muy importante también que Ámsterdam ¿no? pueda tener este gobierno ¿no? de, de izquierdas transformador y que quiera sumarse a, las, a, la, a la propuesta de So we have a net of, uh, of cities, uh, of uh, fearless cities that it's growing, including Napoli, Valparaiso, Palermo, and also the sanctuary cities in the US. But the most important is, that, uh, is the fact that is to have um, a bridge, that we have a, a city such as Amsterdam that can work as a bridge between um, a more uh, Um, a more uh, not developed but a more uh, a thriving uh, Europe and the Mediterranean. So it's very important that such a city, it would be such a city as, as Amsterdam, that it has uh, many parallelisms. Por este motivo, desde Barcelona seguimos y seguiremos con mucha atención lo que pueda pasar en Ámsterdam. Estamos a vuestro lado, uh, combatiendo el miedo y tejiendo redes de esperanza. Muchas gracias. Mike, thank you so much. Very, uh, very inspiring talk. Um, I would now like to invite Luigi Felaco. He told me I could say Luigi because his name is very difficult uh, to the stage. He is municipal councillor from Naples and he's member of the Dem A party and president commissioner of schools and the right to education. The stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you. He's, uh... <laughs> It's a big pleasure for us, uh, me and Dario to join you tonight. A special thanks to Green Link, SP, and the PVDA, and uh, Franz Bickerman, who have uh, invited the city of Napoli to be here. I'm going uh, to introduce myself. I'm uh, Luigi, a city councillor of Democracy and the Autonomy Party. I will try to depict the last years uh, of Napoli government and the political life and the experience of the magistris, the mayorship the magistris. We conquered the mayorship in, uh, in to, uh, 2000, 2011. In same year, we had a referendum about the water. The Italians voted against any form, uh, form of privatization of water, considered the common good. But few cities have respected uh, this vote. Napoli is uh, between those. The water agency Today is totally public. His name is ABC, meaning Water Common Good. The year after, the city council and the inhabitants started a shared course from the recognition of uh, occupied spaces as common good in public use. The heritage of this course is the existence of seven freed spaces around the city, from the historical center to the western uh, suburb, and the growing up of many new spaces in other suburbs and uh, in the metropolitan area. Um, lasciatemi ora fare il punto sulla situazione di questo mese. I, I would like to continue in Italian and uh, tell you how the situation evolved in the last months. Il governo italiano ha detto alla città di Napoli che deve pagare un debito. So the central government of Italy told the municipality of Naples that they will have to pay a debt. Nel 1980 c'è stato un terremoto che ha colpito soprattutto il sud dell'Italia, ci sono stati 3000 morti. In 1980 an earthquake um, was i um, hit the south part of Italy and we had more than 300 deaths. Oltre ai morti sono cadute tantissime case e tanti cittadini sono rimasti senza case. Apart from uh, these 300 deaths, a lot of houses were destroyed and a lot of inhabitants had no house anymore. Il governo italiano ha scelto di istituire un commissariamento e di spendere soldi per la ricostruzione. 
So the Italian government appointed a commissioner to reconstruct the damaged area. A 38 anni da quell'evento tragico che ha subito la mia terra, oggi dicono che i soldi per la ricostruzione li deve pagare la mia generazione. 38 years after this tragic event that hit my country, uh, the central government decided that my generation will have to pay for the debt, for, so the money that was spent for the reconstruction. Io sono nato nel 1985, Dario qui con me è nato nel 1992. Non eravamo nemmeno nati quando tutto ciò è successo e quando c'è stata una cattiva gestione dei soldi per la ricostruzione. So, I was born in 1985 and my colleague Dario, he was born in 1992. So, we weren't born when this earthquake happened. And we are going to pay the price for this bad administration. Oltre il debito della ricostruzione post terremoto, il governo e anche il tribunale ci dice che dobbiamo pagare per la crisi rifiuti. Uh, apart from this debt uh, due to the reconstruction, um, not only the government but also a court. Um, has decided that we also have to pay for the urban waste crisis. Le foto della città di Napoli prima del 2011, se cercate in Google, troverete sicuramente delle foto con l'immondizia che arriva al secondo piano delle case. If you look at uh, photographs taken in Naples before the year 2011, you will find urban waste arriving to a second floor of houses. Il Tribunale ci dice che nella gestione della crisi rifiute c'entrava anche le mafie, c'entravano anche le camorre. Uh, a court has established that um, in the administration of the urban waste, uh, there were also, uh, also the mafia was involved. Nel 2011, il sindaco Luigi De Magistris viene eletto sindaco e finalmente scompaiono i sacchi di immondizia dalla città di Napoli. So, in the year 2011, Luigi De Magistris was elected mayor and for the first time this waste that was lying in the streets disappeared. Il Tribunale e il Governo ci dice che oltre il debito del terremoto dobbiamo pagare anche per i sperperi di danaro che ci sono stati durante la crisi di fiuti. So, the government as well as the court has established that we also will have to pay for the bad administration and the, the money that was thrown away uh, during this whole uh, urban waste crisis. Vi renderete conto che oggi noi abbiamo aperto un conflitto nei, governi, nei confronti del governo centrale. So you can imagine that we um, created a dispute with the central government over this issue. Il mese prossimo saremo a Roma e porteremo tanti cittadini napoletani arrabbiati per queste ragioni. Uh, next month a uh, demonstration will take place in Rome where a lot of um, inhabitants of Naples uh, will uh, take place. Un governo che è stato del Partito Democratico che nelle ultime elezioni ha preso pochissimi voti. And the government who has decided all this was the Democratic Party, il Partito Democratico. Uh, who lost uh, terribly in, during the last elections. Dobbiamo mettere al centro le persone e i diritti delle nuove e delle vecchie generazioni e non pensare solo ed esclusivamente alla questione del debito. Uh, we have to put um, in the center of our attention uh, people and their rights uh, so, <coughs> as well, the, the younger generations as also the older uh, generations. Quindi mi concentro sulle cose 
di cui avete parlato finora, le politiche dell'abitare e la turistificazione. I also want to uh, emphasize uh, the topics that has been discussed, uh, like housing um, and also the, the tourist uh, situation. Fino a qualche anno fa non avevamo il problema dei turisti nella città di Napoli. Until a couple of years ago we did not really had a problem in Naples with the tourists. E pensiamo oggi che il turismo sia una grande possibilità per la città di Napoli. And we still think that tourism can be a great opportunity for the city of Naples. Cancellato il, il, la montagna di immondizia, finalmente abbiamo un'immagine differente da offrire alla comunità internazionale. Um, now that this urban waste crisis and problem is solved, we now really have, are able to show a different face of Naples to the people. Ora questo grande, immenso flusso di turisti che sta arrivando nella città di Napoli deve essere ovviamente governato. And of course, this enormous afflux of tourists that are coming to Naples um, has to be um, administered in some way. L'idea non è quella di aprire un conflitto, ma di governarlo nella maniera più giusta, ovvero pensando anche alle periferie e a di quanto le periferie possono beneficiare del turismo. Of course, we are not seeking conflicts, um, we want to uh, solve this, uh, this situation and we um, are considering to, uh, trying to spread uh, tourism uh, over the city and therefore also to uh, the suburbs. E per quanto riguarda le periferie, uno dei simboli delle periferie è, sono le vele di Scampia, le case popolari di Scampia, famose finora in tutto il mondo per le fiction legate alla Camorra. Um, and talking about the suburbs of Naples, uh, one very famous um, suburb is uh, Scampia, especially the so-called uh, Veli di Scampia, uh, which is uh, a neighborhood uh, that is used as, um, as a background in a lot of movies uh, concerning the, the mafia. Grazie all'impegno di un comitato civico di cittadini che si chiama Comitato Vele, l'amministrazione, in accordo anche col governo, ha finalmente deciso di abbattere alcune di queste vele, di queste costruzioni e di costruire nuove case popolari. Grazie agli the efforti made by the committee uh, for the, the so-called Vele, so these housings uh, in, um, in Scampia, um, they convinced the local uh, government, as also the central government, to finally build um, um, so the social housing in, in that area. È necessario fare rete tra le città appunto Fairless City, le città senza paura, creando delle occasioni di incontro come queste e soprattutto mobilitando insieme e unendo le forze per cambiare la realtà delle nostre città. Uh, it is very important to have a network like Fairless Cities and um, organize meetings uh, such as this one uh, in order that we can unite our forces and uh, really do something for our cities. Ci sono grandi differenze tra i nostri paesi, ma grandi anche confluenze per quello che riguarda le politiche che possiamo mettere in campo. There are differences between our cities, but also similarities, and together we can, we can also find new way of doing politics. Quindi grazie a Fiorenza qui presente, grazie a tutti voi e siamo dalla vostra parte. So I thank the interpreter, I thank you all present um, and uh, we are on your side. Luigi, thank you so much. That was um, 
very inspiring again uh, to hear. You have both expressed the importance of uh, a network of fearless cities within Europe. And I think that ambition is shared uh, by Rutger Grootwassink, Marlijn Moorman and Lauren Stevens, who I would like to invite to join us here. <laughs> and perhaps um, Mark and Luigi would also like to take place on the stage so you can respond. Not all of you may have read it, but what uh, these three have done is uh, made their own statement with intentions of making Amsterdam a fearless city. Um, I'm not sure everybody has read it, so I would like to ask either one of you to maybe briefly explain in one or two minutes what's in your statement and why you think it's important that Amsterdam also becomes a fearless city. Yeah, Whomever sure. would like. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll start. Um, let me start by thanking our guests because uh, I'm, I'm very happy and honored that you're here. Uh, uh, and for me, I think that um, trying to move Amsterdam towards a fearless city and to be part of the fearless city network is in, in, in a way um, reinventing politics because I think that uh, we can learn so much for, from, um, let's say, the, 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 the democratic experience, experiment that you are doing and the way that you are working with undocumented, but also, but also uh, the way that Naples is working with liberated spaces and giving uh, spaces back to the community and uh, 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 restraining communities is for me not also very inspiring, but also something that I think that uh, we as Amsterdam could learn a lot from, but also um, we share so much and that's what you express. Uh, and I think that the, 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 the things we face as a city, um, we have more similarities with Barcelona than with Arnhem or Doetinchem, where I come from. So I think that, uh, in a way, this is also reinventing uh, uh, European, uh, 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 European cooperation. And I was very, uh, I think Franz said it, uh, urban internationalism, uh, and that, 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 that feels good and that's very inspiring for me. And, and you, you touch upon quite a number of themes, could you maybe elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I think that uh, uh, we have discussed over dinner uh, uh, the, situ the way that Barcelona is, is working with undocumented. Uh, uh, and we also have uh, uh, refugees in Amsterdam and we have a community of undocumented in the We Are Here group. And uh, I find it very inspiring the way that you are trying to uh, find loopholes in laws and trying to give people maybe even city rights. Last week I was on a debate, uh, 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 it was a debate organized by undocumented in Amsterdam and it was about city rights and how can we um, give people enough security that they're not that they that are not facing fear. And for me, as, as, as GroenLinks, uh, helping undocumented to be part of our society and to be uh, part of Amsterdam, to be, um, um, to be integrated within our communities is one of the main issues that we face. So for me, that's, that's, that's not also inspiring on a more personal level, but also very, uh, th there's a lot to learn from the way that other cities are working on that. And, and do you agree that what are themes that are important to you? Yeah, I agree very much. That's the reason why we're here. I, I guess tonight uh, for the third time that the progressive uh, left pact uh, comes together. And I, I, I really embrace what is going on here. And I also want to thank Franz for bringing us together and, and Mark and Luigi uh, for, for being here tonight, because I really think this, this is also what Amsterdam actually is. Uh, we also always have been this red rebel city uh, from the times of Mona de Miranda, which is like a century ago when he decided to, to regulate the food distribution uh, and provision in, in Amsterdam until now. And I really think we're now on a, on a tipping point. If you see the uh, influx of, of capital in Amsterdam, that really brings up the question, who owns the city, who makes the city, what kind of city do we want to be? And we really now have to 
uh, well, bring all the powers uh, from bottom up uh, together with other cities to, to, to really decide for ourselves what kind of city we want to be. And I think one of the main examples at this moment in time is, for example, uh, a, a big company like uh, Airbnb, who really decides uh, how the housing market in Amsterdam is just uh, being, well, taken by, by, by money and by, by capital. And I really think that, that we, together with the three parties, but also with other cities who have the same problems and have the same situation, should think about ways to, to take to the reclaim, power uh, reclaim yeah, the city. Back, back to the city. Yeah. And, and this, this sort of reclaiming, getting back ownership, fighting big companies exactly. like Airbnb or, or Windu or whichever one uh, is the biggest one, how would you effectively do this? Like, this is an intention and I get it and I think that's a really good idea, but what would effectively be something you would do? You want to say something about it or do you want me? <laughs> well. It starts with, you, with the question, do you want to do that? Because we really are in this discourse right now that everything is only about capital and uh, earning money and that we need all these tourists and we need all that money. And I think we have to have an, a new story, which is about what, what kind of city do you want to be? So it starts with the question, do you want to regulate? Yes, I do want to regulate because I think we have to decide what kind of city we want to be. And then it's not that difficult to just say, uh, like, for example, Fair b and We were there this afternoon. That's, that's one of the initiatives in, in Amsterdam, that you can also rent a house for affordable prices, regulate it yourself, do it in a very social way, instead of only thinking about the money. So, yes, of course we can do it, and we can do it if we want to do it. It starts with wanting to do it. And that intention is definitely there. Yeah, Absolutely. And, and, and I think maybe can, Laurens can also work on that a, li a bit more. But as, as the city of Amsterdam, we have made a deal with Airbnb. It would be much stronger if we made a deal, not uh, as Amsterdam, but with Barcelona, Naples, Palermo, and a lot of cities. Because I think that we have so much in common and we share so much interests. There's so much common ground. And we really could... could yeah, could reinforce uh, ourselves uh, in, in, in all kinds of discussions. And that, that's exactly what Airbnb wants to do. So they want to divide us and make this memoranda of understanding with all these different cities with, with, with different rules. And, do, and if, we, if we combine all the forces, then we can have really have a strong point against such companies which really take over the city. I think it's, it's a, a really good point. But the question still remains is that the that that sounds like a really good intention but but it can be done and we shouldn't think that but how regulations and 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 think about what kind of city you want to be it's not a difficult berlin has done it new york has done it just saying it's not it's prohibited to to have airbnb renting in the, in the city so we can do that but that's also part of the discourse no, you can't stop all these economic forces. Of course you can, if you want to do it. Of course you can. We make the rules. It's not given by God or something. We make the rules. We make our own rules. Yeah. And you would combine forces with Barcelona and Naples, for example. Um, Laurence, maybe you can tell a little bit about that, how this international um, contribution can be. That What can Amsterdam do in an international network? What would that international network look like? Yeah, what, what I think is most inspiring about this is that um, we now have um, some... We, we work together with cities where we get some economic gain from. Uh, that's why we work uh, how the city works internationally. We look, if we can earn something, we want to cooperate with other cities. But in the end, it's not that we can earn from cities, it's what we can learn from cities. And um, the last couple of years I was here an, an older man, a bedhouder, um, and I saw that when, uh, especially when uh, we saw the, influ uh, the influence of uh, Airbnb, that every city was trying to um, find a way how we can uh, manage this. And I went to uh, Barcelona, I went to London, I went to Madrid, I went to Berlin, and we spoke about it, and we learned a lot from each other. We learned a lot, and we could help each other. 
on a national level, there was no problem. This, so the national government didn't do anything at first, but the other cities, they were dealing the same problems we have. We have a housing crisis, we have a climate crisis, we have a democratic crisis. We have the problems you are facing. So we have to learn. We have to share our experiences and how we can do it on a, uh, uh, how we can solve those problems on a social way. But for us, of course, the most important is we have to learn from how you are dealing with this. So I learned a lot from the people in, uh, uh, in, in especially Barcelona, when we uh, were discussing about Airbnb. So we put up a network of other cities, uh, cities we join together and speak about how we can manage uh, things like Airbnb. But why only with Airbnb? We can do it on all those other themes. We can do the same collaboration. And I think that's the way uh, we should do it. Yeah, and I think that even uh, on, on a more, because um, uh, I strongly agree with Laos, but even from a more political point of view, that uh, like, like, like you were saying, and, and also Luigi, that we see the rise of populism. We see the rise of xenophobia. And if the left wants to make a stand, we have to make a stand internationally. And if we want to reinvent a European cooperation, it should not be done by European institutions. It should be done by Europeans. And it should, done by, it should be done by European cities. And I feel, and I strongly think, that as left-wing politicians, as activists, as uh, uh, um, um, just, just people from the streets, we can make a stand to stop populism and to reinvent the European ideal. I, st I truly believe that. And what is necessary, because I know that, for example, in Barcelona, you have this initiative, and I, I won't pronounce it right, it's the Barrio and Europe. Uh, what, 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 is it, what does Europe mean for your neighborhood? And I think that these grassroots interventions are crucial in defining the future of Europe and are crucial in defining what is left-wing politics and what is left-wing politics going to be in the future? And, and, and this, this international network would then function outside of already existing institutions, you would say? Um, I, if, if this network would be a new institution, it would probably be dead. Yeah. <laughs> so let's not start a new institution. Let's, let's, just let's, work together. Let's work together uh, uh, and, and see where there's a common ground and see where you can inspire each other and, and, and work on it. But let's not start a new board or an institution <laughs> with an advisory board and stuff like that. We shouldn't do that, no. So what should you do? What we're doing today and what we're starting today. And I think that, for example, there are, are, there are so many questions that we can work on. If you look at Naples, is a, is, is, a, is a harbor town, and Barcelona has a harbor. If we look at how to, uh, uh, to sustain uh, uh, our harbor, how to sustain our city, these are major issues for every city in Europe. And I think that there's so much to share, and so much to help each other with, and so much to inspire each other with. It's, I mean, we should talk less and do more. Uh, and so in a way, this is the evening where we have to talk, but from now on, and I think that's important, that what we say is, if we are gonna be in a city board or not, that doesn't matter. We are determined to uh, uh, push forward this, this, this cooperation. Uh, and that is the thing that matters. If we are, I hope we're gonna be in power. Of course I hope so. I hope we're all gonna be in power. But that doesn't matter. I think that what, you, what we try to express today is that we're determined to commit ourselves to this uh, cooperation and to this new politics. And how will that work? If, if I think it's really good that, that you all are willing to commit to this. That's what I hear. Um, but it's a real possibility that one of you will end up within the government and the other one will end up in the opposition or two or three. Could be, could be. Will the, will not, the link not one of us? I don't <laughs> think that will happen because that is what has happened in this coalition. Then it's two liberal, uh, white, right-wing parties that really dominated uh, uh, the coalition, and the impact on Amsterdam is is huge. I think the only positive thing we can see from this is that it matters. It really matters 
uh, who, who is in, in, in power, who is in charge in this, in this city, and that it can also change. So I hope that all the Amsterdam city, citizens will see that it does matter that you have to go vote and have to go vote left to have a better future for Amsterdam. <laughs> Vote left sounds like a, sounds like a great idea. And, and it's not it's not it only by, uh, by getting in power or being in power. It's just the way they are working in those cities is not who is in power. They are working with the people who take power over their own neighborhoods. So that's what I think is most important. And that's not that we are political parties. Of course, we are political parties, and that's a good start to begin with. But we want to give the people the power. We, we want. The, power, the people to take the power they have over their own neighborhoods. So that's not important if we are in power or we aren't. Uh, of course, I also hope that we are in power, but, <laughs> but that's not, that, that's that's not, not the, key the issue. only important question about this uh, co uh, uh, collaboration. No, and I think you, you specifically mentioned this in the document that you're interested in redesigning democracy and redesigning uh, the ways in which people can participate within government. Um, Maybe, Lounge, you can elaborate on that a little bit, because you say you want people in power, but what does that mean? There are some ways in which people can now influence their government. You want to change this, or...? There are a lot of ways people can uh, influence the government. There are the official ways, by just talking to the city council and stuff like that. There are the unofficial ways, the ways of protesting, of, of challenging the real powers. That is the most important important and most difficult part, the not official way to influence the power. And that's what I think in Amsterdam. Uh, we are very good in demonstrating and protesting, of course, but that's the one thing. But we see that a lot of people are, are, are not demonstrating, are not protesting, uh, but they have some ideas of how they should make their neighborhood better. And I think that's what I meant by we have also a democratic crisis because a lot of people are, getting, are, are putting their mouths closed, not doing anything, not saying anything. I even think in 10 days a lot of people in Amsterdam won't go to vote, but I know they know what's best for their own neighborhood. So I think that's something we can learn from other cities. How do they do it? And maybe uh, we can also give them some, uh, uh, um, some, some good experiences from Amsterdam. Oh, yeah, but, but, but also to, to make it clear, let's, let's, um, I, I think that we need a, a, a radical democratic revolution in Amsterdam, but it's not something that we can pose top down. I think that we have to, if you really want to redesign the, 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 the way that, that citizens and city government uh, uh, functions together, what you must do is that you try to put it up grassroots. And I think that, exactly, especially Barcelona and, and, and your movement uh, is trying to redesign this, 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 this relationship between social governments, between social movements, government citizens. And I think that is something that we just have to start. It's not something that we can uh, oppose from top down. It's something that we should do from bottom up. Okay, okay. And it's, uh, for no, now, it's didn't. between them, and later on, I will invite you to ask some questions. <laughs> but if you have, a, do you have a very important question now? Sorry? Do you have a very important question well, now? I think we have permanently important <coughs> questions, but I think one of the most important and relevant differences between Amsterdam and Barcelona, for instance, is that Barcelona has a very long uh, tradition of uh, anarchist uh, and uh, socialist uh, uh, movements from the last hundred years at least, where people in one way or another have that, uh, uh, that self-assertion, uh, political assertion in their blood. Uh, in, in one way or another, we lost it here in Holland, and at this moment, it's very difficult to find a way where people can uh, can participate on a democratic, direct democratic uh, way, like it's happening right now in Barcelona. We don't have it, and I'm sorry to say to Evans, for instance, that uh, there is very short while ago a debate with uh, uh, one of your colleagues, uh, Armine, uh, what is her name? I forgot her. A very old uh, uh, member of, your, uh, of the... What is your question? Very much against direct participation. 
very much against uh, 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 participative democracy. So how you think you're going to achieve that when you want everything uh, in reality from top to down? You are, you are, you are, I, I don't know about, sorry, about, sorry. about every discussion you had with, uh, with, with people from our party, and she's not very old, she's 16, no, six, 60 or something like that. But um, um, I think the most important thing is I, we want the direct uh, the participation of the people and just getting their power over their neighborhoods. That's another thing of what you should say, who has the power over the city, uh, sorry, the, the, the national government or stuff like that. You need a rep representative, representative um, um, uh, power if it's on a high level, if it's on a, a difficult level, but not on every level. And that's what I think is the mo most, most important thing. We need to think about bottom up instead of the top down. And that's what I think this uh, is about what we can learn from other cities, because I totally agree with you. We don't have it at this moment here in Amsterdam. It's not normal that we listen to what people are saying. Uh, of course, we listen a little bit, but we have our ideas first, and then we start to listen. So that's the, we should do it the other way around. First, ask people what's best for your neighborhood, and then make our ideas. Thank you. Um, I would also like to um, invite um, two other left-wing parties who are here represented uh, tonight, because it seems like, um, as you yourself in the statement say, um, these are themes which sort of transcend party politics, and uh, we should be inclusive, try and be as inclusive as possible. It's you three up there, and I'd like to give you the opportunity to also uh, respond for Pirate Party. Yes, thank you. Um, I'll put my note on there. <laughs> yes, um, first of all, I would like to thank Frans and uh, Rutger, Marlijn, Laurens for um, inviting us here today because this really is a great day for Amsterdam. Last year, uh, a little uh, over uh, almost uh, two years, I was in Barcelona for the Fearless City Conference where activists, community uh, organizers, activists, politicians, came together from all over the world. There were people from South Africa, uh, Beograd, um, Barcelona, Naples, um, some other people from Amsterdam, there was someone from Bayern as well. And it was really a sight to see all these activists, people uh, inspiring each other. Um, and what Mark said at the beginning of this evening really is the, the um, the, how do you call it, the core of the issue. There's a threefold crisis right, right now. A democratic crisis, a social crisis, and an ecological crisis. And the idea of the commons, which is the basis of Barcelona and Comus, really tackles all three crises at once. We can reclaim our data, like Barcelona and Amsterdam are doing right now um, with the um, Decode project where people themselves decide what data they own, who they share it with, how they can use it. We can reclaim the housing in the city by starting a housing cooperation as a city and giving people the power to choose um, how to share their houses. We can reclaim our public spaces like they've done in Naples. We can um, start working on our own food production in the cities by um, using permaculture design by doing urban, far uh, urban farming, and we can start um, um, more energy cooperations, fund more energy cooperations. Um, yeah, I'm looking, this is, like I said, this is a great day for Amsterdam, but it's also a first step, because the commons can only work if there are, if it really is a bottom-up movement, and we need all the activists in this city, all the activist organizations like Fair Cities, Rebel Cities, we are here for the next steps, for the next steps. So I'm li really looking forward for the next couple of years to work with them on building or on making Amsterdam a rebel city and a fearless city. Thank you. You would also like to respond? Uh, yes, please. Yeah. 
can I do it through this? Okay, thanks. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for inviting us, and thank you so much also for sharing your stories. Actually, I feel really honored to be able to speak here. So, yeah, thank you. Can you quickly say who you are? Yeah, yeah. I'm. Oh, of course. Yeah, my name is J.C. Feldhuizen, and uh, I'm um, a political or, or candidate for the political party Amsterdam by Eén. And through my political party, I'm trying to contribute to building up a radical, anti-capitalist, anti-racist, feminist, left-wing movement consisting out of the left flanks of local and national political parties, but also activist, cultural, neighborhood and social squatting uh, communities in the Netherlands. And because of tonight, actually, I can add a new goal to my political agenda. And that is making Amsterdam a fearless city and be part of the uh, international network of uh, fearless cities. I think... <laughs> I think um, it's our task to make the left the left again. Uh, that's why I say we need to focus more on fundamental change of society, for example, through the means of collectivization and international solidarity. So there's two concrete proposals that I would like to do, or just two ideas I would like to throw out there. And the first one is about undocumented uh, refugees. Uh, Rutger was also uh, speaking about this, and I think actually the Piratenpartij has a really good idea about this. It's called uh, the city passport. Maybe it should not be named uh, passport because uh, I do not agree with the idea of borders, but the... <laughs> <laughs> But, but the idea is that through this document, every citizen of Amsterdam has uh, access to housing, healthcare, education and work. Um, so also undocumented people. And the second idea is that I think we need to ensure that Amsterdam commits to working together with the Palestinian uh, boycott, divestment and sanction movement and stops doing business with companies which are linked to the Israeli occup occupation of uh, Palestine uh, as a means of showing international solidarity. Thank you very much. Thank you. What I forgot to mention is we keep referencing this document uh, that you guys have written and it's uh, available outside. So if you go out, don't forget to grab it. It's really inspiring. Um, I think it would be good to uh, see if any of you have any questions you would like to ask. Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Menno Grootveld. I was the organizer of the Rebel Cities Conference in Paradiso two and a half weeks ago. Um, I have a few ob observations because uh, one thing that is rather strange is that um, this is uh, uh, actually it is a top-down thing because there are uh, political parties here, whereas uh, my concept of Rebel Cities is really different. I think it has to be uh, bottom-up and we have to get rid of political parties. That is actually what uh, Barcelona and Como has done. And that is what I find very inspiring. Well, they are not a political party. We can ask uh, uh, Marco, but I don't think that, uh, that they will call themselves a political party. So let's get rid of political parties. Let's, m let's build a movement and let's, uh, let's make uh, it possible that the movement takes over the city council because we have to talk about majority politics. Uh, this left-wing pact will not be in power uh, in, two, in uh, two weeks from now. I'm almost sure about that. Um, well, we'll and, and I regret we'll it. Uh, let, let, me, let me tell you that I regret it. I, I would like to, uh, it to happen, but I don't see it happening. And uh, the, the most um, uh, relevant or uh, the most probable uh, um, uh, ex ex uh, outcome of the elections will be that one of you or two of you will be in the uh, city council with one of the right-wing parties or two and that we will have the same story all over again. So let's go for majority uh, uh, politics. We have to grab power and, and you cannot do that with three different parties and, and one or two or three uh, small parties on the sidelines. No, we have to be, build one movement. That is the most important thing. Uh, would you like to respond? Uh, we'll see uh, <laughs> what happens in the elections. Um, but I would be interested, maybe if I could ask you to respond, because yeah. we have discussed also with, with Xavi and uh, why maybe this is a step and, and um, maybe political parties are fading away. Um, but maybe you can explain why you're still interested in cooperation with us. 
Still, still. Sobra, perquè no entenc, perquè diem que no som un partit polític. Sí, lo voy a hacer en castellano, Elena me va a ayudar con la traducción. Espera, espera. Can you make the question again, please? No, I think that um, the, the question is, um, uh, we have discussed also with, with Barcelona, with Naples, and uh, I see the point that we are more traditional political parties. But what do you expect from us, let's say, traditional political parties, in trying to make this cooperation uh, work in the end? Yo, cuando he hecho mi intervención, uh, he marcado muy la diferencia ¿no? en España entre los partidos políticos y lo que llamamos tradicionales, digamos, y lo que llamamos nueva, nueva política, con gente que viene del movimiento vecinal, ¿no? de, de, de distintos movimientos sociales. Y he explicado que esto sobre todo era uh, por el tema de la corrupción, que, que en España es mucho más crudo, mucho más amplio que aquí. So when I was talking about uh, about the the context um, the context uh, about the context where uh, everything started, um, we mentioned about the corruption and uh, the that is a big problem in Spain. And does this answer to your question? No, 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 no. And oh. now, now I go. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, en, en España, por lo tanto, sí que era necesario ¿no? como mirarle, mirarle a los partidos políticos y decirles, hey, salid a la calle, venid a la calle, que nos podamos reunir en asamblea ¿no? y, en, y que desde la asamblea todos seamos iguales, ¿no? independientemente de tu historia, tu trayectoria, tu representación, tus votos, tu patrimonio o tus deudas. So in Spain, um, therefore, uh, it was needed. Um to gather all of us from different areas and without uh, in, in equal terms. Y, y básicamente, si, con la pregunta que me hacían, uh, yo creo que, que lo, lo que les estamos pidiendo a los compañeros y compañeras de partidos políticos ¿no? como más tradicionales y con más trayectoria es que acepten estas reglas ¿no? de, de, la, de, de la, la democratización de los propios partidos políticos, ¿no? de que las discusiones no sean y los, y los acuerdos no se tomen de forma tan jerárquica, evidentemente que tiene que, tiene que haber una estructura organizativa, pero que... Hay, que, que haya ¿no? realmente espacios ¿no? de, 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 de deliberación y que los partidos estén abiertos a la ciudadanía. Y luego, evidentemente, todo lo que tiene que ver con la transparencia, ¿no? algunas políticas de transparencia que he explicado del código ético, y luego también un tema que es importantísimo, que es la feminización de la política, ¿no? que haya también unas formas ¿no? que de alguna forma nos alejan ¿no? de, de la política tradicional siempre protagonizada por hombres, ¿no? etc. So basically, um, we we want to we want to try different uh, new new rules and a new way to make politics that is uh, without so much uh, structure or without so much uh, hierarchy and uh, trying to create a space open space for debate and um, and also trying to do feminize, feminization of the politics which means uh, to do politics in a, not such a conventional way, but so giving other voice, hearing other voices, etc. No, no, thank you very much. And I think this is much of an answer because the question is, I mean, you can be cynical about that we're trying to do this, or you can see it as a, a spark of hope that maybe in this city, as maybe traditional par parties, we are trying to change our party politics and politics as such. Because that's what I feel that should be done. If you look at the way that, I mean, there are huge differences between Spain, Italy, and the Netherlands. I don't think that we have a strong action movement. Do I, do I, do I find it disappointing? Yes. But do I think that in a way, this is also a new starting point for us to reinvent politics? That's the way how I see it. And he's going to help me with it. What, what, just, just one more thing, because Mark also said it wasn't translated, that um, 
party politics, parties themselves should be de democratized. It's not so much the, the problem of the par being a party, but being a demo real democratic party as, a, as an assembly, all the people deciding to get it, being transparent. And so, so that, that, and I think your parties can also change a little bit on, on, in that sense. But that's what he said also. It's not so much a party that's the problem, it's the, it's the democratization of the party. Yeah, and, and let's also see this as a, as a starting point, because I understand your question perfectly, but also in two weeks' time, there still will be political parties that will not change in two weeks. And this is also a starting point, especially because it's not one party that is here, it's five parties that are here that all say we want to do this. And I think uh, we can learn from what happens in Barcelona, we can learn what happens in Napoli, and you don't know what the future will bring, but I think by doing this before elections we say this is the direction you want to go together and i think that's a really important step and i hope you agree luigi you wanted to respond sì riguardo a napoli ad esempio i movimenti sono autonomi a napoli yeah for instance uh, if you look at naples uh, the movements that we have are independent movements e hanno deciso autonomamente di occupare case, di occupare spazi abbandonati dall'amministrazione e dallo Stato. E hanno deciso indipendentemente di occupare case e occupare spazi che il governo ha lasciato aside. Sta nell'intelligenza dell'amministrazione e della politica e dei partiti politici capire che questa è una grande occasione. And it's the intelligence of the, um, the, the political parties and the, the administration uh, to understand um, what they can do about this. La cosa importante è che oggi abbiamo degli spazi liberati che sono uh, che creano servizi alla cittadinanza, servizi che lo Stato non riusciva più a garantire. And it's also important to realize that with these free spaces um, we can offer uh, services to the community that the, the official local government just neglected to do. Così l'amministrazione ha riconosciuto alcune esperienze. E con questo la local administration recognized also what we did. Quindi il rapporto è duale. C'è un rapporto positivo nei confronti del movimento che oggi è più forte perché è riconosciuto e non, ha, non deve temere la, la polizia che faccia eruzione sostanzialmente all'interno mm. di questi posti. Mm. And this is also a dual relationship, and it's a positive relationship because of this uh, recognition from the local uh, government, and that <clears throat> makes it also that we do not have to fear, you know, the police uh, erupting in, into these spaces anymore. E la politica è più forte perché riesce attraverso la partecipazione dei cittadini a restituire servizi. Uh, dal basso veramente verso l'alto. Mm. And also uh, it's also dual because also the politics came out uh, this experience uh, more stronger because they realized that um, that they gave also something to the community and so that make, made them stronger as well. Quindi non dobbiamo aver paura né delle elezioni, né dei partiti, né dei movimenti, ma dobbiamo remare nella stessa direzione. So we don't have to fear neither elections nor political parties nor the movements. We all have to just row in the same direction. Thank you. Hi, um, I have a question to Lawrence and to Rutger. Lawrence, you said that learning is a very important aspect for you of these networks. And Rutger, you said that uh, you don't want to build institutions. And 
I get it that these networks, all these networks between cities are super young and they are not mature and these are the first steps. Learning is a very easy step and this way these networks can grow. But don't you think this is not ambitious enough and too slow? We were talking about crisis and ecological crisis, the one I know the best about, and there's time pressure. And the national governments fail to address these issues. And city networks will become more and more important. We can think big, but don't you think you think too slow? Don't you think you have to think about building institutions quick? Because we don't have the time to let these networks mature in such baby steps. I'm, uh, I'm very impatient, so uh, I don't want to start by building a, a far uh, few from the, f to the future uh, way, and to, to make a big organization. I just want to start, start working together. That's what I, I what was my experience with the dealing with Airbnb was first I spoke to other cities, then I thought, okay, they have the same uh, problems as we have. Now I want to learn from you. And then everybody say, is, is asking, okay, but with what cities do we have to work with? And then there was the problem. We, we had an, 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 an international convention. And at that moment, there was just another uh, city, city government in Berlin. So should we wait? Because they should join. No, we don't have to wait. We have to start learning now. Don't uh, wait for some institution to, uh, uh, and, and then start learning. Just start learning on different issues at this moment with different cities. And at this moment, those cities where we can learn from are, of course, Naples, of course, uh, Barcelona. But in sometimes that can also change. What I thought was very, um, what struck me a lot was uh, we have an official, we work officially as Amsterdam together with Athens. And we all know that Athens, there was a big problem in Athens uh, a couple of years ago. The refugees were coming to Athens. And what was Amsterdam doing? We were just having our formal role to Athens. So we were do, weren't doing anything with them. We didn't help them at that moment because that wasn't what we agreed on, helping on refugees. I think we need to be more um, flexible and start learning from each other uh, because I am very impatient. So just do it. But, but I, I have to say, I think you're right. Uh, 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 and I think that we should be focused on uh, the saying, uh, be realistic, demand the impossible. Uh, and that's what we have to do. And what we should do is try to ignore our national governments uh, at certain points. Uh, 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 and, and that's why it, it does make a difference if you are in power. Because the only way that Barcelona could make a difference is to become in power. And the same in Naples. And if you are in power, then you can make these, these, these even faster transitions. Is it going to be fast enough? I just don't know. Maybe it's not going to be this fast enough. But if we, for example, if you want to do something about the fuel, the fossil fuel and fossil fuel industry, if you want to make, for example, your, your harbor more sustainable, uh, uh, then it, the, the only way to do it is by working together. And is it going to be fast enough? I don't know. But I think that this is one of the best opportunities we have. So that's why I think we should at least try and start and uh, go ahead. This is also something uh, that you touch upon, this sort of defying the rules that come from The Hague uh, that, you, that you touch on in your document, especially I think when it comes to the dispersion of refugees throughout Europe. Um, you three have the intention of sharing the load, for lack of a better word, um, of this refugee crisis more equally amongst cities. Um, my interpretation of that would be that Amsterdam would take on more. Um, yeah. Great idea, but that would probably be defying the Hague. Um, how would you go about that? Would you still do it? What, what, what is the actual breaking of the rules that you uh, refer to? No, I think what we've seen uh, also in the last four years is that uh, the national government uh, um, um, is, 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 is acting like a strict mother, but even if you are uh, saying that you're going to do it your own way, uh, they're going to back down. And we've seen that in a number of issues. Uh, and I think that we should be more self-assured and should be more 
fearless and should be more courageous and should be more brave in saying, hey, this is where we stand, this is what we want to do. And especially if uh, uh, the political color of a city uh, is, is completely different from your national government. And I think that what is, what is going to happen? I mean, are they going to send in the military? I mean, what are they going to do? So I think that you have to be brave and you have to force this and uh, even and, and, and it, it, it only strengthens us if we are in an international coalition. So I'm not that I'm not that scared about that. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tanya. Uh, I had a lot of experience working with Spain and Italy in the LGBT movement in the past. And we did learn a lot from each other. And the most things we learned was by being together, discuss, and uh, uh, you know, really work out possibilities of using one way in another country, in another culture. But there was one main point which was always evident, and that was that the north of Europe has much more money than the south of Europe. It's a thing. And uh, so I would like to address the uh, elephant in the room and ask the Dutch political parties, I didn't discuss this with Rutger, I'm the chairperson of GroenLinks, uh, whether they would be willing to organize uh, a conference or a gathering of fearless movements in Amsterdam before the end of the year. Yes. Uh, uh, Are you? Yeah, I would love to. Uh, but, 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 but. We'll have to check if there is not already something planned. Uh, but I think that, that we made it quite clear that um, uh, uh, um, we are more than willing to host uh, uh, such a conference. But I'm not quite sure if that's the right signal. So maybe in 2019. But I would be more than happy and honored uh, uh, to host such a thing and to also uh, 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 gain funds for that. Yes, yeah, sure. <coughs> Um, stel, stel dat, uh, dat jullie met de vijf aanwezige partijen hier uh, straks na 21 maart in het college komen. Wat gaan jullie feitelijk ander, voor een ander soort politiek bedrijven ten opzichte van de al zeer actieve uh, burgers, uh, buurtcommunities, uh, wooncoöperaties, energiecoöperaties, et cetera? So to quickly do it in English, how are you actually going to change politics from what it is now? I think it starts with trust and openness. So what you have seen the last couple of years is that there was a lot of uh, saying that, of course, all the uh, inhabitants of Amsterdam could bring their ideas to the city government and the city council, but nothing was done with it. And that was because the coalition partners just didn't trust each other and were not open to new ideas at all. So it's not us saying these ideas that we want to take in and that idea, not because I don't want kind of ideas will come the next couple of years. And that's exactly the kind of trust we have to have together. So we need a coalition uh, in which you really cooperate together in an open attitude towards the city, because I really believe that ideas that come from the city will bring us a lot. And I think it's more like an attitude you have to have in politics than saying this is what we want to do and this is not what we want to do. It's about how you want to want to interact with inhabitants in Amsterdam. Betekent dit uh, dat de SP niet nog een keer vier jaar in een dergelijke coalitie deelneemt? Dat hebben ze al eerder gezegd. Dat dat niet... Ja. ja. Well, then that's solved. <laughs> I, have a, I, I want to make a small addition because uh, uh, we have had a lot of discussions about, I don't know if this, this is the right term, uh, buurtrechten, neighborhood rights. And I think that. Right to bid, right, right to right challenge. Right to bid, right to challenge, uh, yada, yada, yada. And I think that uh, uh, what we need to do is that now we are uh, um, um, trying to, 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 uh, to temper the expectation of all these kinds of initiatives. And what we should do is that we should embrace them and celebrate them as the true Amsterdam. And is, we shouldn't be bothering them with all kinds of stuff and rules and regulations, but we should support citizens who are trying to make this city a better place. 
uh, uh, maybe one, one small addition to that as well. It's also something about their administration. So it's also that the leaders of the city should say to the administration, tell the administration that we have to have this open attitude. I was at the Zuiveltuin yesterday, which is a great initiative in uh, uh, Betondorp. Uh, and it, the, the people there t told me that it took them three years to have this garden where, where people collectively uh, participate uh, in a neighborhood, which is absurd. It, it's b bizarre that, that it takes citizens in Amsterdam three years to have such a garden. And that is a, the way the administration works at this moment. So we really, the leaders in Amsterdam should also be very strict in telling the administration that they have to be open, open to initiative in the city. Yeah, my question kind of follows up on that. I think um, we were talking about democracy from the bottom up, and um, there's actually not two, but three votes people get to cast uh, next Wednesday. One of them is for the, um, I, I can't even call it neighborhood council, um, um, there is no traditional political power in those committees um, anymore. Um, but I do think that there, there are some possibilities there to see these as a starting point for a bottom-up, democratic, not completely political, more involved, et cetera, et cetera, um, type of gathering. Um, so I would really love to hear any concrete tips and ideas and suggestions from the Barcelona and Comú experience. And I would like to hear from the people sitting in the middle um, some sort of commitment to uh, making those very local councils voices that will be heard and will be taken okay. seriously, please. No, I, I don't think that these 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 neighborhood councils. Uh, um, um, I think that they are crucial uh, in uh, redefining uh, democracy within neighborhoods. And I think that their main task is not to talk about this street or that street or that play garden or that, but in 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 in, in a sense, this is a whole adventure, and we have to. Uh, uh, um, we have to, 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 to walk together uh, uh, to redefine on a neighborhood level uh, 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 this democracy and this participation. And for me, that's what I'm going to say to people who, who I have something to say on, that that is crucial if you want to do a democratic project in the city of Amsterdam, their position is going to be crucial. Mike, maybe you also have some sort of additions or tips uh, as to how to formulate this bottom-up movement that... Uh... La, la participación y la radicalidad democrática yo creo que es algo que, que no es fácil de, de generar ¿no? y que es una cosa como decían antes, que viene de la historia política de la propia ciudad y, y del propio país. So the, the, the citizenship uh, participation and the democratic radicalization, it's not uh, easy to get. Perdona, ¿qué me has dicho? Que viene de la historia. And it comes from, from a historical background. Pero, pero solo, solo una idea... Si el gobierno, si los gobiernos no están para frenar la participación, censurar según qué expresiones políticas, sino que están para celebrar la participación, promoverla ¿no? y facilitarla, esto ya es un cambio importante, que quizás no se va a ver los resultados rápidamente, pero sí que ayuda a generar una cultura política de la, de la participación y de la radicalidad democrática. Esto es un cambio de tendencia imprescindible, creo. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm just feeling really bad. <laughs> Friends, can you help me? <laughs> if I remember well, <clears throat> um, it's radical democracy is... Um, no, let me... Just very briefly. The, the most important is that the government... Uh, don't be there. <laughs> 
No, it's, it's only an idea, and I think that I I, I can. It's it's very important uh, what Roger says uh, uh, before. Uh, the, the, the government uh, to start. The government has to be there. Uh, uh, Fernando. Yeah, to as, as, as stopping the expression, the political expression of the people, the cultural expression of the people, are all the different op 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 opinions that are. It's important that the people uh, celebrate all this participation. It's just a, a, a change of uh, about the position of the government between the, the, the city and the citizens. No, but I think that is very important. Muy bien. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, the uh, right-wing parties, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Faith and Dave, just a couple of days ago, have mentioned that they want to sell 350 uh, buildings that are property of the, uh, the community. Uh, uh, do you, I, I know? You, I guess you know what I'm talking about. And uh, from the other side, we have the need of uh, spaces for the community. Imagine yourself, we are gonna starting reclaiming those, those buildings. We're gonna take, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go in groups and just take part of those buildings. Are you going to support us? Uh, ah. <laughs> Bring squatting back. No, but, no, but uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe to start, you know, uh, uh, we, we had a debate earlier today. You were there and I said <laughs> that we should start squatting again. Um, but I think what is even more important is that, and that's, that inspires me a lot uh, uh, in Naples, I think that local government should gain real estate, should buy real estate, and then liberate it and give it to the people. Yeah, I totally agree. I think, sorry, sorry. No, but I totally Please agree. I think respond. that's one of the shames of the last couple of years that a lot of uh, public real estate has been sold uh, in a time when we really need those real estate uh, property because those, that's within the neighborhoods. That's where people meet each other. That's where people can eat with each other. If they are lonely, there's a lot of loneliness in the city that can, they can meet each other, that they can uh, bring their ideas together. Um, and, and I think that's one of the shames of the last couple of years that we, we sold all this uh, real estate uh, property, which we will not get back easily, but we have to do that. Uh, and, I, and I think, yeah, that's one of the most important things in all of our uh, plans for, for the coming years. Yeah. We have to uh, stop being market driven here in Amsterdam. Uh, everything is for the big market prices, uh, the, 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 the dwellings but which hasn't been sold, they have to pay more to rent it, the people who are, who are there. So it's a big problem here uh, in Amsterdam. Everything is market driven. We have to be democratic driven. And to answer the, uh, the, the, the question before, I think the neighborhood activists who, who are going to be elected uh, on the 21st of March, but also the neighborhood uh, activists who aren't going to be elected. We have to listen a lot to them. That's much my experience. I'm, I'm now for 12 years. I'm in the city council or in the city board, and listen to those neighborhood activists. If neighborhood activists are talking to the politicians, then something big is happening. So I think we have to learn and listen a lot, uh, also in this city. Yeah. And we can also learn from very nice examples. One of the nicest examples, I think, in, in Amsterdam is Boost, where uh, refugees and people from the neighborhood meet each other and, and they uh, cook together. Uh, refugees learn the language uh, there. That's real estate property, our own private real estate property, but also a thing like that is being sold. Another example is uh, the Zondagschilders, where elderly people meet each other every Sunday to paint and to meet each other on the Gelderse Kade in the city center, also is being sold. So where are they, those people are going to go? So those are the, the initiatives that are so important. We don't make those initiatives. The only thing that the city council has to do is give those spaces to the city, to the inhabitants of Amsterdam, 
to do these collective things. And that's so important. That's the way we build a city together. That's very clear. I think uh, Barcelona and Naples are maybe already a little bit further down the road than we are. Um, but I, I hope in four years' time that they come here and they can learn from us. That would be great. But for now, is there a lesson or something as a last statement, Luigi, for example, that you can uh, tell us here that we need to take away for these next four years? Do it. <laughs> Non sono venuto a fare diciamo, lezioni, nulla da imparare, solo portare un'esperienza ed è quella di costruire insieme alle persone che anche lo so quello che stanno facendo eh, i partiti qui presenti, eh, l'alternativa. Il... Sì. Il, il punto più alto del successo del sindaco di Napoli è stato quando è stato sospeso da un tribunale ed ha camminato per la gente per due mesi espulso dal palazzo dopo è ritornato e siamo ritornati al governo dopo soli due mesi più forti di prima quindi la connessione con le persone è fondamentale poi per il resto una rete di esperienze amministrative atte alla mano ci aiuta, una rete europea, e ci aiuta a avere una prospettiva europea di soluzione dei problemi globali, perché sono problemi comuni a tutti i paesi, a tutte le città e abbiamo bisogno di risposte globali, oltre che una rete di scelte coraggiose mm. come è stato detto e fatte dall'amministrazione well i'm not here to uh, to teach you anything i only just wanted to share some experiences um, it is very important uh, to be able to offer alternatives uh, to the people and um, in that respect <coughs> Uh, something that was very important for us in Naples um, is that our mayor <clears throat> really was very successful when uh, he was suspended uh, for two months, but he had <clears throat> so, um, such a support uh, from, from, the, from the inhabitants of Naples that when he came back after two months, he was really uh, stronger than, than ever. And another thing um, which to me is very important is to have this uh, network on a European level um, that makes it possible for us to solve uh, the problems that we encounter and which are um, global problems. And they all need also global um, answers. And the only way uh, to do that i think is uh, through this, uh, this network that will enable us to, uh, to really help each other. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, the same question for you. Any lessons, tips, tricks? Something that we need to take away for the next four years or that you want to teach them? Sí. Yo compartiré también una, una breve experiencia que creo que, que de alguna forma puede, puede ayudar a, al debate entre la relación entre la institución, el gobierno y los movimientos. Yeah, to, I want to share the experience between uh, the, act, the social movements and the government. La experiencia de gobernar de tres años ha sido muy dura y nos hemos encontrado con muchos límites, límites jurídicos, límites judiciales, por ejemplo, con los desahucios, ¿no? So, the experience of... Uh, uh, we've been governing for three years already and we faced problems such as the evictions and uh, we've, been, we've been putting solutions to it. 
Nosotros, como explicaba antes, hemos creado una unidad para intermediar entre los bancos o los grandes propietarios y los vecinos que están en riesgo de perder su vivienda. Con esta unidad hemos parado más de 2.000 desahucios, pero algunas veces no conseguimos pararlo. So we created a, a, not a unity, a, a device. Well, Yeah, that, uh, that deals with, uh, with, the comp with the societies, with the real estate societies and, uh, and the neighbors. Aquellos desahucios en los que no conseguimos llegar a un acuerdo entre el propietario y la familia que está viviendo, lo que hacemos es que el concejal o la alcaldesa hace un tweet ¿no? en, en, en las redes sociales diciendo, esta semana teníamos... 15 desahucios. Hemos conseguido parar 10. Nos quedan 5 que necesitamos la ayuda de la ciudadanía. ¿no? Y entonces se llama a la ciudadanía a ponerse enfrente de la puerta para, para parar el desahucio, ¿no? para obstruir ¿no? la entrada de la comisión judicial y de la policía para, para echar a la familia. Entonces yo creo que esto es una experiencia de, de cómo desde la institución ¿no? se puede también generar espacios uh, con, con la ciudadanía Uh, para poder ir un poco más allá de lo que la ley permite. So, um, by this, uh, this uh, unity to, that we mentioned before for the evictions, to stop evictions, and um, most of it have been successful, but those that uh, we haven't been successful, and from the, from the municipality, what we do is we create, a, we make a tweet, and then, um, We say, for instance, um, this week we had 15 evictions and we've been able to stop 10. So there are still five evictions that, uh, and we use this as a tool to call on the, sit on the other citizens to, to try to give support to it. And through all this, uh, we have had the experience from the, la experiencia is there? Que esto, esto creo que era un ejemplo de cómo a veces con todos los límites, la, el presupuesto limitado, las competencias que, que tenemos las ciudades, podemos llamar a la ciudadanía no a ponerse, no, no solo a protestar y ponerse en contra de, del gobierno, sino de alguna forma a participar y ayudarnos a, a ir un poco más allá. So from this experience we are trying from the, from the municipality to gather people, to give support to this and, uh, and make a, and face this problem. No sé si se ha entendido. Bueno. You understand, yeah? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Do you have a, a quick last uh, few words? Then, then just a, a very, very few. Uh, I'm just looking forward to cooperating because I think that change is made in cities uh, uh, and we have so much in common that we should just start. Less talk, more activism and doing. Thank you. And I think uh, we'll wrap this up for tonight. Um, thank you so much, Mark. Thank you so much, Luigi, translators, for your very hard job. <laughs> Lawrence, Marjolein, Lutgen and Frans Biekman. Thank you very much. Don't forget the statement. <laughs>